Hi, how are you? Uh, welcome to the Writing Biz. Uh, this is where we take care of the business of writing. This week, I'm bringing you part three of our social media series, and we're lucky enough to have Stefan Hovnanian with us. Um, Stefan is the author of the Google Plus Pro Tip series of books that have been really helpful to me, and um, I would recommend them to anybody because he really knows how to drill down and explain things to where you don't even have to think about it. You just get it. Um, it the and also, it, when you get to the end of the show, you'll really see what I mean about the way that uh, Stefan can explain things and get you to understand them. But I'm not going to give um, him a huge introduction. I'm going to let him explain a little bit about himself. How are you doing, Stefan? I'm all right. Thanks so much yep. uh, for having me. And hi, everybody. I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to hopefully give you some ideas about Google Plus and, and uh, why it's a great idea for, uh, for your writing business, because it is. <laughs> it is. I know it's helped me tremendously. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, all right, fine. Uh, a little short bit about me. I've been in the um, basically been in the web business for 14 years now. Um, I build and manage and help market small, uh, you know, small websites um, for mostly companies and nonprofits. Uh, don't do too much work with bloggers and um, you know trainers and coaches in that that world. Uh, work mostly in the, um, uh, I guess you could call it the corporate sector, uh, but with smaller businesses. Um, I love email marketing. I uh, love Google+. Plus. Um, I love web strategy. I love having all of it tied together in a way that makes sense for your business. And I have always put my role, um, at least with my clients, in, in a way where you know, you hear a lot of experts, you hear, you read a lot of stuff online about how we should be doing content marketing and web strategy and all this other business, and uh, you got to figure out how it applies to you. And I sort of fill that gap um, with my clients and, you know, filter out the things that they don't have to worry about and talk about the things and try and help them implement the things that, uh, that are going to make sense for their particular business and their goals and limitations, even, uh, you know, human resources and all that other stuff. So that's me. I come from a, a, a little different world than the people, you know, um, that are, I think, you know, grew up in the whole social media atmosphere. Um, it's not the be all end all. And so uh, as a result, um, I also like Google Plus for that reason, because it was, it was a place that went beyond just a social network. And it gave me a platform, um, you know, to, to take all this information that I have locked up, you know, filtering for my clients and all and say, okay, I, I know some things about some stuff and, um, you know, let me, let me help other people try and figure it out. And so, you know, here we are a year, uh, two years later, almost since I've, I, I guess I officially got active. I've had a, an account for a while, but yeah, it's been about two years, I think, since I officially got active and, you know, it's, uh, it's been a fun ride. That's for sure. <laughs> that it, that's true. I, I started last October, I believe it was on Google Plus, and I, I just rem it amazes me what it has changed for me and my business and also personally. I've met some absolutely wonderful people that I have really good relationships with um, through the platform. You know, I, I, don't, I haven't told you the backstory of how I've watched you over the past almost a year now, but I have. I started watching you on Mia Vasa's show and then that led to other shows, a lot of things with Mike Alton and um, some other people. But one of the things that really made my turnaround in the very beginning to get me to understand how the platform worked was your hover card posting. Oh, cool. Something that simple, honest to goodness. And I, I give that to everybody when the very beginning I said, there, don't do blue heads. Make sure that your profile says everything you want it to say. And I still see to this day, Really, people that are well known that step into the Google Plus space, but they don't tell you really anything about themselves. So if you didn't know who they were, didn't care so much about what they were saying. Do you, do you agree with that? I think that that profile is incredibly important. It's it's an extremely important piece of real estate. And also, don't forget, um, if somebody were to search your name, like if you're at a conference, you say, "Hey, just Google me," okay? And if you have a name that doesn't get misspelled too often, which wouldn't be me. <laughs> But um, but if you, you know, yours is easy, right? Laura Williams. All right, boom. Yeah. <laughs> right? So here, Google me. And there's a good chance that because you have your your face now that, you know, it's the same face that the person has met. And um, if you type that into Google, there's a great chance that they will see you before they even go on to Google+. And they'll see, like, um, 
you know, and, and knowledge card they call it of uh, of you. And I mean, you know, and if not, they'll have possibly some uh, you know some links of of different Laura Williamses, and you can hopefully find the right one. But but if they do go onto Google Plus and search for you, it'll be a lot easier because they'll see your face. So that's why it's really important to have a current profile picture with a nice little smile, and um, uh, you know it also helps for authorship and things like that. Uh, you know, to attribute the stuff you're writing online with your Google account so that uh, Google has a really good sense of who you are and the things you know a lot about. Like that's, you know, that's really, really important and it's part of the setup for a good profile. Um, you know, it's to link out to the blogs that you write for or the websites that you own and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, even beyond that, uh, you know, the the profile gives you, I mean, gosh, there's so much great information. I mean, and uh, to you know, big real estate for a cover photo. Um, again, we talked about the profile photo, and um, you know you have tagline and, and a lot of the, some a lot of the similar things that that uh, you know the other hover cards and other profiles uh, on social media sites have. But the one thing, and this is what you were talking about, Laura, that the that the Google Plus profile can do for you that you can't get anywhere else is that. Um, you know, when you hover over somebody's name, this thing shows up in over 25 different places and not just on Google+. So there's been instances of your name being able to, you know, somebody being able to hover over your name like in a news search. So if you're a writer or a journalist uh, for news outlets, um, there have been instances, and, you know, this stuff changes all the time, but there have been instances where you can hover over somebody's name in a search result on Google search in their news section and actually be able to pop up that person's profile. Now, if you're a, an aspiring author or an aspiring journalist and you have that opportunity and you're going to have some default cover image and, you know, my tagline being like somewhere over the rainbow or I'd like cats or something silly like, you know, or not silly, but something that doesn't tell me enough about you to really build that authority, like you're shooting yourself in the foot. And, you know, the same thing goes for um, all the other fields and all the other places that this hover card pops up uh, across Google and across Google Plus and, and I believe on blogger websites as well. So it's a humongous opportunity for you to have a, a digital business card uh, to hand out in uh, tons and tons of different places across one of the largest search engines in the world, like why wouldn't you do this that I like do this upright? You know. Well, I agree with you. One of the, the pet peeves I have is when I see School of Hard Knocks. It's that's just it's first of all it's so overdone that it's ridiculous, but second of all I think that's probably in the education sector it's probably better just to put nothing at all. Because there's a lot of people that haven't, you know, don't have a college education or whatever. They do extremely well. So why even mention it? I'm, I'm not going to ask you what your college education is, and you're not going to ask me. I think those, you know, the education fields. Uh, mm -hmm. Remember, when you first join any social network, they want you to find people that you already know. So find your classmates, find your relatives, find your friends, find your this, find your that, uh, find people that work with you. So that already have this account. So the the work and the education field are two fields that you know every social network needs, so that you can find other people like that. Now, if you don't need to or you don't care, um, use it for something else. It's real estate, man. So <laughs> you know, right. yep. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll pull mine up because I don't have that. I have some other stuff on mine. Where is it? I'll tell you what I have. So on mine, in, in my education series, my education section. Stepanhove.com slash Amazon. That's where I went to school because yep. that is a place that that's something that you can actually see on my hover card. Um, it's that's a, a good idea. Me. And I don't care that you know I don't care that other people from American University or Rutgers and Camden um, right. find me because I don't remember most of them anyway. So see, I think on mine that I do have on there that I went to a graphic design school, but that's because I do graphic design as part of my business. So that would make sense to me. But I just don't. I don't. I just don't think that. I think that you should be more serious about the profile and what you're trying to communicate. Particularly if you're if you're in business. But even if you're not, I mean, sometimes if you're house cleaning, if that's what you do for a living, if you if you're a house cleaner, but you have something on there about it, maybe I'm in your area and looking for a house cleaner. You know, yeah, true. but put some put some information on there that has some value, something to interest people. I, yeah, I know that's, too. That's I, the thing is to tell people enough about you, and, and actually we have a comment in the in the live event um, from Zara Altair who said who has a great point, and that you know 
the whole you can write whatever you want, but only a certain amount of it is going to be shown. Obviously, right. you know, there's all things only about this big. So make sure that you keep testing it and tweaking it so that it doesn't you don't get a little dot 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 cut off um, because it looks really really nice and really clean and professional um, when when you have full full words and you know nothing's getting cut off. So um, right. yeah, definitely definitely play around with that and you know again there's no like perfect formula because if you have a lot of W's then that's going to space it out. Right, right. I agree with you. Um, I wanted to mention too like. I, I know a lot of writers have said to me one of their biggest problems is the time constraints. And in other parts of this social media series, we have talked about rescheduling your, your posts and things like that. I myself, and I have found, a, uh, I would say more often than not, uh, they don't schedule their Google Plus posts. A lot of people prefer to use the organic approach. And the reason I'm bringing this up is I'm want to say that it, in a business, a particular writing business, if you want to get good traction on Google+, Plus, you do have to be somewhat present. And I think that's what makes a difference on Google+, Plus is that so many people are present. And that means that they, when, when they have that kind of um, mentality, they tend to put out better content because they're really interested in the comments and the conversation and carrying on with it instead of just putting a tweet up and maybe you'll get a reply, you'll get some retweets or whatever. It's a, it's a different environment. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, to the scheduling part, there's a couple little nuances. First of all, mm -hmm. only a page can schedule at this point. Uh, they don't have it available for profiles, although I think there's a Chrome extension called DoShare that, you know, hacks its way through it. Um, I don't use it, but because I prefer the organic thing anyway. But, you know, if you are a brand or if you have, if you want to work with somebody and you want to have them help you, um, you would set up a page, a business page, and it's probably a good idea anyway to do that. Um, and your business page can schedule posts. Now, the cool thing is I agree with you in that it's great to be here. It's great to be present. Um, I, I mean, I do that, right? But at the same time, from a time stamp, time strapped situation right. if you know that you have an audience who is you know expect well or, or if you know you have an audience in the US but you work on your business and you're in California and you work on your business at you know 11 o'clock at night because that's the right. only time you can do it you're not helping yourself because you're posting for everybody in Europe if you post yeah. live in the stream so what you do is you schedule these out and you come back the whole thing I guess what I'm getting at is you uh, you you can schedule a post. I don't think there's anything wrong with that because you want to make sure that it can see it hits as many eyeballs as possible, um, you know, based on your audience. But make sure you show up to, uh, well, to comment that's, and to respond. That's real. You phrased it much better than I did. The way you said that. That's that's really what I meant. You have you have to be there and be present for that engagement. And because I would I would extend it a little further than just engagement on your own post. You know, let's go back to what we were talking about before with the hover card real quick. That shows up in a gazillion different places, right? So, and especially on other people's posts. And so the only way to make, the only way to have it show up on other people's posts, leave a comment on somebody else's post, the only way to do that is to actually show up on Google Plus and spend some time going through the stream, you know, going through some targeted circles that you have of people you want to build relationships with or information you want to, you know, you want to stay on top of and then leave comments. And when you leave comments on other people's posts, you are now handing out your business card to them and everybody else on that uh, who's leaving comments on that post. If your comment's insightful enough and really shows that you know what you're talking about, um, and it's not just LOL, great, you know, whatever, then although sometimes there's totally an appropriate time for that. Right. I just want to point that out. But, <laughs> <laughs> but if you are trying to build a relationship, you're trying to come across as, you know, as an authority or, you know, whatever, build some rapport with people, uh, you're not going to do the LOL thing. You're gonna you're gonna leave something insightful or something professional, personable, you know, whatever. Um, and if it's going to catch the attention of not just the person who wrote the post, but also all of their all the people commenting on it, you know, there's one more chance for them to hover over your name, see what you're all about, and add you to their circles right from there. Or click over to your profile, which better have a bunch of information, you know, and some great posts on. Uh, that you've you know to show that you're not just all about yourself, and I think that's right. you know that's where a lot of businesses especially are falling short because they're used to you know sending a tweet and just responding maybe, 
or they're used to Facebook, which does a really lousy job of <laughs> keeping you notified of comments and, and interaction on your own post. So they're just not used to it. You know, LinkedIn's getting a little bit better now that we can tag people and whatnot, but it, they're just not used to it yet. So there's a cultural shift for a brand that they have to show up and they can actually, we have this open network, by the way, everybody, where you can, even as a business page, you can go onto somebody else's profile. You can go onto their post. You can leave a comment. You don't have to circle them. They don't have to circle you. It's just open. And, and it's a beautiful thing because think about that for businesses. It doesn't exist anywhere except for on Twitter. Right. right. But not even at that, this is such a more long-form engagement. I mean, you can, you really have a chance to get your point across and to frame it the way you want to, which is difficult. I mean, difficult in 140 characters. Exactly. So it's a little bit different. But, you, yeah. know, you know, I had somebody recently, I was in a discussion. You have to understand, I live in a social media... Sahara Desert. I live in rural Florida in the center of the state where nothing really happens. So no one here understands what Google Plus is. Well, I was in this conversation and they were saying, but that sounds like it takes so much time. How could you put so much time into something like that? And this is what my answer was. And I said, you know what, Not the, it does take a lot of time for me to do my posts and things, but the thing is, is that time that I spend on there, I consider uh, it's I'm educating myself. It's uh, learning equity to me because I'm reading other people's posts. I'm learning about things I didn't know about. I'm learning how to say things better or how not to say things. But that is what that extra time is on Google Plus when I'm scanning through the posts and I'm trying to find things that interest me or may interest my audience. That's how I'm learning. And I think that's a really important point that people sometimes don't discuss is that, that there is a value to that outside of just what you're doing time you know to where you are evaluating other people's things and, and, and getting to know people it, it's an amazing amazing uh, um, very advantageous thing to do for yourself and your business yeah uh, and and by the way I love that phrase learning equity oh my god that's <laughs> so awesome um, and you know it's funny you were you were uh, we were talking before um, you kind of hit the nail on the head here as far as like the time you're spending, right? So think of, we said be present, right? We think how, how important mm -hmm. it is to come out and, and be present, not just on your own posts, but on other people's posts, have conversations. So look at it like, an, you know, when you're trying, you want to try and uh, uh, chunk out your time, you know, you'll have a post. Maybe there's some time you're going to spend posting or maybe you're lucky enough to be able to schedule it. Then chunk out your time in a way where you spend, uh, you know, a few minutes Taking taking a break at an office. Look at it that way. So this is like this isn't a, a social break. You're being social, but it's a it's a working break. And so you have an opportunity to now go take a quick break over on Google Plus, talk to a few people, you know, start up some conversations, um, and just maybe learn a couple of things. And you're right. I mean, this is this is a break that is worth taking because it's going to build you up and leave a longer lasting impression than you know just chit chatting about. Uh, the latest reality show at the you know in the kitchen. <laughs> That's true, and it, it brings me to the um, next thing I want to discuss was uh, that that method works if you are uh, somewhat organized in your circles and how you follow people and the type of people that you follow. That way, your feed isn't full of a bunch of garbage. It's actually full of things that are of value to you that you can uh, either hold to yourself or exchange you know with your audience. But you really have to be careful about what, you know, you don't want to waste your time. So make sure that your feed is somewhat clean. Yeah, it, it's true. And, and um, you know, I'll just, a couple of tips, by the way. So mm -hmm. you can change the volume if you want to just surf your home stream. You can, you can actually do that. And you can set circles or even community posts for the communities you've joined to show up in your home stream. Now, mm -hmm. not all of them do. There's some algorithm involved there. But... Um, you can have certain circles tuned down or even shut off to not show in your home stream at all. So maybe there's a group of people that uh, that you are prospecting or whatever. Um, 
you know you might want to you might want to see more of their posts or maybe you turn that one off and you go to that circle specifically but you just have you just kind of trust in in the Google serendipity engine to show the right posts to you in your home stream um, you know based on how you tune st some of these circles showing your posts in the home stream um, you know more or fewer or standard I guess is the other one uh, so you can do that and um, you know mix it up a little bit move people around if they start to post too much maybe put them in this move them to a circle that that doesn't show as much posts um, or just you know the, the key is is really noticing uh, recognizing that you need a strategy number one and you also you need a purpose um, and you also need to recognize this is a moving target so you gotta build in some time and I'm guilty as charged here but you do need to build in build up some time to regularly be reviewing your circles um, and also be reviewing your strategy. Um, you know, another quick example, like today I was talking to somebody and we were saying how there's a group of people that we've followed and we've built up great relationships with them, like phenomenal relationships. We love what they post. Um, you know, we love their content. We're happy to support them. But we, don't we may not necessarily need their content anymore because we've now we've built up enough learning equity to uh, you know, to be maybe on a different level, or maybe our focus is our focus business-wise has changed. So I don't need as many posts about that particular topic, you know, or from that person who posts a lot about right. whatever it is. Right. And then, so I can move them to a different circle. Now I don't want to uncircle them because they're still, you know, I still want to support them. But as far as me consuming t content and me making the most use of my time, best use of my time from my home stream or wherever, I, I can move that person around. And there's nothing but wrong with that. That's no different than real life because if you're changing jobs or you get promotions or you move through social circles, you do the same thing. But you may not think it as consciously as you do when you move somebody to a circle, but you do the same thing with the people that you're around. So that would make sense. Yeah. It, yeah. A lot of this Google Plus stuff really it emulates real life. It's, uh, it's uncanny. Or it could have been intentional. Who knows? But it does. It emulates real life. And to that, I would also add when you're engaging on people's posts, when you're talking to them, do it like in real life. You know, right. this is would you would you go into a room and and start screaming, "Hey, buy my product"? No, you wouldn't. You know, mm -hmm. you would go and you'd shake hands, you'd listen to people, you'd see what they have to say, you would try and make a genuine connection with them. If you can take the mentality of building real, legitimate relationships here on Google Plus, um, your brand goes way farther than if you were trying to market yourself. The marketing happens on its own. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And it's when, going back to the hover card too, uh, I know that when the initial post that I read way back when, um, when you talked about the hover card, was saying like your business card. And I've always thought of it that way because those blue heads, uh, that's what I call them, the little blue heads, I, I just don't even under, and I see people, I started at first, I was really nice, and I took all the blue heads and I put them in a circle to see if they would change later into something better. And very once in a while they did, but a lot of them just stayed blueheads. So I even quit doing that. So sorry about blue, sorry to all you blueheads out there. But if you walk in a room and you meet people, particularly in business, you hand them your card, you introduce yourself, they ask you where you work, what you do. It's automatic. In the first two minutes of meeting somebody, you're going to have a pretty good amount of information on them. Why wouldn't you do that in a social platform? The same thing. I don't understand the thinking behind. I need to keep all that private. You wouldn't keep it private when you walk into your local chamber of commerce. And and nor would you shout it out without you know getting to know right. people, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you've got to have some type of relationship. You I know. absolutely. Yep, yep. Um, now I wanted to ask you when. How do you work? Like when somebody follows you, and I know sometimes I know I know myself. I don't always answer back to everyone who follows me, but I do try to pay close attention to new followers. And the the thing I like about Google Plus is that there is a, a the I guess what you would call a low pain of entry. You can find the information you need to set up your profile and to get organized. And it's also if you pay attention, it's pretty evident uh, what the space, who's who in the space, and what's going on. So I think that newcomers do have an ability to move up, which I don't think in other, well, Facebook, for example, it's very hard to do that now with the way that they're structuring things. It's hard to get seen. It's hard to get anybody to care about what you're saying. And um, for me personally, I, I, I quit doing business there because it just, it, 
wasn't doing anything close to what Google Plus does for me, so I just stopped. But I do think that um, there is there is a low entry point, and if if I don't know how you feel, I know you have so many more followers than I do. Do you tend to on your newer followers to kind of just kind of keep an eye on what's going on, or how do you approach that, or do you at all, or just do in a more organic way and wait for something to happen? Um, all right, so once you hit a certain <laughs> threshold, and I don't know where it is, you stop getting notified. Mm. It, you know, once in a blue moon, you'll get, a, a, you know, someone so added you to their circles. I kind of wish Google would do something where they would give me the, the notification only if it's somebody that I should really get to know. Like, that would be, how cool would that be, seriously? Like, can we sidebar first? Because, <laughs> like, I don't know a lot of people, right? What if, like, what if, like, Okay, now, those of you know, you know, Facebook marketing, you know the name Mari Smith. You should. Mm -hmm. If you don't, Mari Smith is like the queen of Facebook marketing. So what if all of a sudden I get this, and I don't know, let's say I don't know who Mari Smith is, and all of a sudden she adds me to her circles. Again, I'm at a point now where mo I don't really get, you know, I can hit refresh on my profile. It's just you hit a recommendation engine at some point where the number just keeps going up and, and um, you know, you don't get notifications. But, but how cool would it be if I got one that said, you know, Mari Smith added you to your circles, and I knew that because I got that notification, this is somebody I should pay attention to. So Google, if you're listening, hook me up with that feature. <laughs> Hopefully they are listening. We'll see. <laughs> um, but sidebar um, aside, uh, or back to whatever, however that works. Um, we, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a great. Here's here's a, a tip then. So obviously here I am telling you that you know at some level. Um, you're not going to get notified of people who add you to your circles. So if you're that person who wants to start, you know, hit that that uh, that entry point, the best thing you can do is to leave comments. I mean, the best thing you can do is to, if you find something of interest. And by the way, finding something that something that's interesting is very easy because there's this thing that Google does really well. It's called search, and you can search within Google Plus. So just pick a topic, find some interesting things, and start commenting. Or pick a URL. Like pick a website address that you that you really liked, like a business page or something that you think is really interesting, and type that URL into the search bar, because then you'll see everybody who's talked about it, and you can you already know that you have something in common with these people. So it's like leaving a blog comment to a larger audience. So you can just go and say, oh okay, you know I feel a certain way about this topic. Let me go and hop onto so and so's uh, post, of, you know Google Plus share of this article, and leave what my thoughts are. And now all of a sudden you've entered the conversation intelligently and, you know, it's like, hey, whoa, where'd you come from? Nice to meet you in a good way, you know? Right. And, um, uh, you know, that, that's the kind of thing that can make an impact, uh, especially if you're starting to, if you want to build relationships or learn from people who have been on the platform a lot longer or, you know, who might be using the platform and have a certain area of expertise. I don't want to use the word influencer or, you know, authority or anything like that because there's a lot of people that, that I guess the way the social media market or people look at it would not fall into that category. Um, and I don't consider myself as one of those people either. But, you know, there's people having genuinely awesome conversations and know a lot about what they're talking about. And, you know, they might only have 500 followers or whatever. So my point is, if you see something interesting, leave a comment, you know, build a relationship. That's what this is all about. And it's really easy to do on Google+. And that's how that's you get people's attention. I'll tell you what happened to me is about five or six months into uh, my time on Google Plus, I went through a situation and I'm still to this day not sure what happened. But my main account, Google Plus, shut down, completely shut it down. And I was so discouraged and upset because I had done a lot of work. And you know what the main thing was that kept me going is the response from other other people on Google Plus that were so incredibly helpful to me that get you know they connected me with people with Google they did a lot of things to help me get that straightened out and it was amazing to me and that's when I knew in my heart that this was working for me that the whole thing was working for me so I think that uh, if you stick with it and you pay attention and you communicate with people really well and try to be a you know a nice person nice pays it does <laughs> that uh, you can go far within the platform. Um, I wanted to talk about Hangouts for a little bit, not just doing a show like this, but how Hangouts can be pulled into your writing business 
and actually used to make things uh, more organized for you, save you time, and uh, help you get a better grasp on the tasks that you have to handle every day. So go for it. <laughs> sure. Well, hey, uh, so super quick primer on these things. What we're doing right now, I'm going to put my Mar Ronnie Bincer hat on. Um, <laughs> and Ronnie Bincer, for those of you who are new to the platform, is pretty much the de facto Hangout Master. Guy's totally dialed into this. He's an ex extremely cool educator um, yep. and whatever. So go follow him if you're interested in this stuff. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that we, you know, Hangouts is sort of a video call, or you can broadcast live on YouTube, and which then the Hangout, which is what we're doing now, Hangout on Air, and then this Hangout, when we're done, gets saved onto Laura's YouTube channel, which is totally awesome. Uh, because now it becomes a YouTube video with all of the bells and whistles and uh, and trimmings of a YouTube video on the second largest search engine in the world, owned by fill in the blank Google. Google. All right, <laughs> so you know what we're doing here. If you think about it, is this is like content marketing on steroids right now. We're creating a ton of content. We're having live interaction. We're building face-to-face -face relationships with each other, and all of this now can happen later in a replay can get repurposed six ways to Sunday, you know, into I mean, you're going to put this into a podcast. So those of you who are listening on the podcast, hi. And um, this started out as a video. And so, uh, you know, you have so much opportunity to, and, and look, we're building a great relationship together too. So um, you, again, it, I can't emphasize enough, especially as a writer, how you need to be in some way, shape or form involved with Hangouts on Air. Because again, it just and not actually we you have a couple other ideas too, but I mean hangouts mm -hmm. in general, I mean the Skype video call has been around for a while, that's not news. But you know, this is this allows for collaboration, right? Hangouts you can if you're in a private hangout call, you could also pull up Google Drive. You could start, you know, pretty much collaborating on an idea. And I've been in situations where I've been talking to somebody, just getting to know them, and we start hitting on this idea that becomes like so magical. It's like, you know what? Let's open up a Google Drive doc. And let's just start writing this stuff down before we forget it. And you both can actually write while you're talking, and like you're in a meeting. And then it's done. It's like the commercial. If you've ever seen the commercial, it's exactly what happens. And it's legit. You don't have to circle back with people. You just happen all at the same time. And you could even theoretically do this in a recorded private way and have all this stuff saved for training for later or to go back on and, you know, review or, you know, I forgot what I was going to say. You can go back mm -hmm. and review on it all later. So, you know, being able to record video in any way is really awesome. And you can do it privately or you can do it publicly like we're doing it now. Um, but there's also, uh, you know, there's also the private, like, Skype call type thing that, you know, right. people are used to, um, which would be like just a private chat or hangout video call. Uh, but, yeah, what we're doing now is, is, is phenomenal. And like you said, Laura, it's not just this kind of thing where we're doing an interview style, um, you know, talk show. There's, I mean... There's a ton of examples here. I'll, if you want, I'll give you guys a few, and then you can pick it up from there. Yeah, go right ahead. All right, cool. So um, you can do, uh, I mean, we'll just try and stay with writers. I mean, you could um, you could do a book launch party. You could mm -hmm. do a, where which would, I've actually been on one. It's really, it's like kind of fun. And so you invite a bunch of people to a live event. Uh, you do your book launch party. You talk a little bit about it. You can, um, you can invite people in after the fact, like come into the film strip. Um, you know, like we have now, and uh, you know, gosh, there's so many different ways. Um, I got a, a comment from Ben Fisher who stole my thunder. I know, those cards. Yeah, yeah. Ben and I work together, um, so that's starting to happen a lot more. But <laughs> the uh, there's an app called the Showcase app, which allows you to put links up um, right next to, like, it would be, I think, here, right, right here, or whatever, or maybe <laughs> right <talk>. there. <laughs> Um, maybe here, who knows? It's so confusing. <laughs> but yeah, you can actually put links up on, and it's free. It's oh, by the way, it's free. Um, <laughs> all of this is free, and and it saves again, saves on YouTube. But yeah, you can you can put the showcase app. You can put links up to your books. People could go buy them. Um, you can put links up to blog posts. You can put links up to your guests. Um, you know, it's a pretty interesting concept. Not so much, not as easy to do it like the live interaction stuff. But if you want to do, but you know, we're talking to, about creative uses, and you could do a book launch party like this, um, something that you know maybe doesn't have to be live, but you want to have recorded for posterity, and you can use again use the showcase app for that, which is sick, and it came, that only came out a couple weeks ago. Um, there's other things you can do too, like you could do, 
uh, you can do mobile one, you know, mobile hangouts on air. So uh, you have to start them from a computer. So it usually helps to have a team of people doing this. But right. you could theoretically do interviews live at a conference. You could do um, unboxing videos where you know you have again more promotional style stuff. Um, if you're, a, I mean, going back to build uh, businesses. If you're a builder, for example, you could do a virtual walkthrough um, while you're talking about your construction process. And you know, just, hey, let's walk through this whole thing. And uh, you know, it's like part interview, part demo, product demos, product launches, really anything that would be engaging to people um, and interesting. And uh, I mean, you can do it on YouTube. I mean, you can do it with Google Hangouts on Air, and then it saves to YouTube. And you know, quite honestly, you could then repurpose it afterwards too. Um, you know, take the video, slice it up. You know, maybe again turn it into a podcast and do all these other things uh, that we do with it. Put it up on your blog. You know, so it's a great starting point because it's so chock full of opportunity um, and you know you get to be very natural about it because you're talking instead of well, trying see, to figure out how to write. I was thinking and I mean I'm just kind of throwing this out here I haven't said this to anybody else but I, I guess it's just as good a place as any of having a page on my website to where my community members could do readings of their book so in other words they could read a chapter of their book and I put it on my website of course with a link to buy the book but I was thinking that's a good way to open up that door for writers to think of the possibilities. So if they did that, another one for writers that I was um, had thought about was uh, to hold a writing group. You could hold a writing group with people from all over the world. I have, um, I don't know if you know this, I co-host uh, Indie Office Hours with Charlotte Pierce. And we have a good friend that comes on uh, every so often and she's from Israel, but you could have people from all over the world participate in critiquing your work so you would get that international um, uh, opinion that you know you wouldn't necessarily get here. There's tons and tons and tons and oodles and oodles of stuff that you could do with Hangouts. I was telling uh, Stefan earlier I use him to train my daughter as I'm going through something. I record what I'm doing and explain it at the same time which saves me a huge amount of time because now I don't have to sit down with her and I don't have to keep answering questions. She can just rewind and she doesn't have to keep hearing you know, me over and over <laughs> trying to explain it so much. But um, there's so many things that you can do. It's just it's a brilliant, brilliant uh, way to not only market but to do business. You, and uh, Stefan, you were saying about uh, your clients, how you use it with the clients, communicating with them. Yeah, I mean we're, we're, we're on we're on video calls all the time uh, mm -hmm. with our clients, but there's also, again, the training idea is awesome. Um, and, you know, actually it's very similar to what you're talking about, Laura. So if you have, mm -hmm. um, uh, you could say, all right, let me do, let's do a training. We actually did a couple of training sessions where we did a private hangout and, you know, created the event. So it got on everybody's calendar. Then we all joined the hangout, uh, which was great. And we're all in there. So we're all sitting there talking and it was recorded. And because it was private, we didn't have to worry about it. It's still saved to our YouTube channel, but it's saved as an unlisted video, um, which was great because then, you know, you didn't have any public visibility. Um, and then usually, you know, it's a good idea to maybe download it afterwards and store it somewhere but okay. um, or make it, like, completely private. But regardless, that's technical. Uh, but, yeah, for, for training purpose, it's, it's, it's fantastic. For, um, uh, you know, even for screencasting. So you could say, all right, I'm going to do a... Um, you know, let me do a a screencast of a particular troubleshooting thing that um, you know I want to do with my client, or if I want to do a review. Uh, somebody did this for me actually. This was cool about my LinkedIn page. So I got a review. I got a private YouTube video, and they recorded it as a hangout on air because it's just a heck of a lot simpler to click a couple of buttons, make it a private video, and then go back later. Um, I even did a book review that way for uh, David Amerland's book about. Hangouts for business. I figure, why not, right? That just makes way too much sense. Let me do a hangout on air, record my review for them, and then I recorded it privately, and then just went onto YouTube and changed it to public when I was ready because I published it with a blog post. So when I was ready with the blog post, published, you know, I changed it to public, and it was done. I mean, this, you know, anything you can record, and anything that you want recorded, can be done as a hangout on air, and it's just crazy simple to start these things up. Plus, don't forget you have all of the additional apps that are you know that are being used I mean there's one called uber conference for example that lets you um, use hangouts as a uh, you know as a conference line 
So you can actually call people in who, so they don't even have to worry about logging in and having a Google account or anything like that. They call in just like your go-to meeting link or your join me or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's that. I mean, anything, anything that but you just, can do. As, as a writer, when you're in a, you know, a project such as putting out a book, there's, it's a multi-armed project. So you have your agent, your publisher, your book cover designer, the person who designs the inside of your book. I mean, there's a lot of pieces to this. And to be able to, to sit there without leaving your home with all of them at the same time and save all that time with the phone calls and emails back and forth, back and forth, to say, this is what we want, this is what we need to do, that is just brilliant to me. It's just so helpful. And, it, and, it's so, and Google makes it easy. I mean, makes it incredibly easy. Yeah, and remember... You know, you have two two versions of it. You can have the kind that you don't record, where we're just being, we're just collaborating, we're just talking, or you could have the kind that you do record. Um, right. You know, hey, another thought is if you're you're in a position where you're going to do a presentation, and maybe that's new for you, um, or you're going to do a reading or something like that, and you're not, you know, it's maybe one of the first few times that you're doing this, you're still a little uncomfortable. Do it as a hangout on air, privately to yourself. Oh yeah, practice. <laughs> practice and then go back and watch it on t you know watch it on TV watch it on YouTube YouTube's become my TV now lately I know um, <laughs> you know I have to I have to I have to interrupt you I have um Verizon on my phone and there's a thing there that if I pull up a YouTube video if I push a button it automatically turns my TV to YouTube and I watch that video so I watch a lot of my hangouts on air on the TV because it's just that easy before mm -hmm. it was like plugging in the HDMI thing and um, going through all that, but I, that, how cool! That's so smart to me. Just this oh, little yeah. tip, and I I watch whatever I want. It's yeah. really cool. Yep. I usually I watch mine usually from my phone on my tiny little screen, like on the couch in the dark before I go to bed. But which is like the worst thing to do because yeah, I have a smart TV. I can totally throw it up on the uh, on the, I have the same kind of thing. Um, or two big screens here at my desk where I could do it, but whatever. <laughs> You know, it's just, it's whatever's most comfortable, I guess. But uh, that's, I mean, Larry, there's a point right there is that people could watch your replay, um, you know, really anywhere. And the whole thing with this is like, you know, the whole thing, guys, is that you can make these one-on-one -on -one personal connections. You can see my body language, right? If you're listening to the podcast, you have no idea what I'm doing right now. But... Um, <laughs> I had to. I couldn't, I couldn't hold it back. But you have no idea what I'm doing. You don't know if I'm bored. You don't know if I'm just going through the motions, if you're just listening. But if you're watching, you know, face-to-face, -face, you get to see my body language. And as a, um, as a writer, being able to, like, build that trust, build that brand equity with somebody, with an audience, I mean, that's tremendous, right? They're going to they're gonna see you and hear you even so much more when they're reading your book. You know, they're going to have, like an even more powerful voice in their head reading the book along with them because they know you and that just builds a tremendous amount of brand loyalty and so why wouldn't you do this and also there too I mean you have the showcase app or even putting the link in the feed it's an e immediate call to action that they can take advantage of it's it's just uh, and not only it's not like you're sitting in a bookstore with 10 or 20 people either you can keep putting the same content out, moving it around and doing different things with it to reach even larger and larger audiences and move it from social platform to social platform. You're not just, it's not just a Google only type deal. It's, uh, I mean, it, you, you can get pretty powerful with it if you do it right. You yeah, know, that's you just have to, thing, especially yeah. with the replays. And, and again, like, you know, like we said, you could take part of it and chop it up. You could take like a, you know, a five minute clip, um, you could record an entire you could record an entire thing and then just chop it up into pieces and release one uh, you know one chapter at a time. You could do that as part of like building buzz. So there's a there's a whole bunch of different ways that again anything you can do with a video, you know, or a YouTube video, you can do you can use Hangouts on Air to do it with. I mean it's just it's a fantastic tool. That's one of the projects on my uh, uh, bulletin board is to take these videos and take out, you know, two-minute clips of certain things people have said and repurpose those. But that's, that's, um, that's a time constraint right now. But exactly, there's just, it's ridiculous the amount of things you can do. And also, too, I mean, it's not just with the video. We should probably clear that up. Uh, in the regular stream, too, being able to an uh, think about the questions that somebody has brought forth from their post that you read and using their post as a uh, bouncing off point 
for your own questions and answers and then that it starts a conversation of course with the author of that post and other people have commented in their post it becomes this big huge thing which you taught me very well today by the way <laughs> but it becomes this big huge thing and it's 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 just really 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 a cool way to uh, get the word out and get yourself known so yeah it's a very collaborative platform that's mm -hmm. that's for sure there's um, a couple of words that get flo you know tossed around a lot like co-opetition uh, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorites um, definitely collaboration there's a there's a bunch of C's I'm drawing a blank right now but yeah those are um those are two of my favorites and you know the marketing takes care of itself guys you just gotta come out there and be you be real and um, you know you have the tools to do it that's that's the whole thing that's the big takeaway here you know you have like think about what we talked about right we you have an open platform that you can go leave insightful comments on in text you have opportunities to uh, connect your profile in a way that um, tells Google who you are, you know what you know a lot about, where you've written, gives you credit for that, and and also gives you a, a really great piece of real estate for people to get to know you. And you know what? Hey, you can use it for marketing. I have first thing on my on my about tab on my profile is if, if you want consulting or you want to buy some books, here are the links, guys. I mean, yep. you know, first thing right off the bat, you can totally do that. There's nothing wrong with it. And yep. but then you go and say what I'm all about and whatever. So there's that, right? people being able to connect with you in a, in a great way. There's also the ability to you know, have face-to-face -face conversations, face-to-face -face relationships with these Hangouts. All of this is here for you. It's all for free. It all gets indexed in search. It, you know, it all tells Google more about you, what you are, and, and also the other people around here, who you are, what you are, what you're all about, right. what you know a lot about. I mean, like, you know, I'm getting real fanboy here right now, aren't I? But, it, but it's true. Like, it's all here, and it's all available for you. And you know, yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time to get some of the nuances and the culture, but just think about it like real life, and you'll be fine. I wrote a post earlier this week, and it was uh, the five things that uh, Google Plus has helped me with in my business. And one of them, I don't, I don't remember what number it was, but it was a point that uh, seemed to resonate with a lot of people. Before I got involved in Google Plus, to meet the people that I wanted to meet to get some answers to questions that I had I would have had to go to a conference I would have had to pay for the conference go to the conference um, then I would have to position myself in a way to possibly start a conversation then I'd have to hope the conversation began and then once the conversation started it may only be a one or two minutes where on Google Plus I can spend a, a little more time just time wise but I could actually get to the point where I'm having a real conversation with somebody whose opinion I trusted that could answer my questions and that would move me forward in my business and I at uh, that that's probably the most powerful thing that's had an effect on me is being able to do that and on the flip side of it um, people who are investing their time in the platform and being those people that are helping out you know essentially for free because if you think about it we could all be getting paid for our time but we're not um, <laughs> but what does that do what's that doing for you I mean it's it's building up in some respects it's building up some brand equity uh, it's building up you know you just said it Laura this is you know people that you whose, in, whose information you are you know you're interested in your their opinions you're interested in people you want to learn from well they got there a certain way and you know you want to connect with them so if you're if you want to be in that role then you have to put some time into it. You have to put some time into helping um, and sharing some of your knowledge. And you know, you can draw whatever lines you want, guys. I'm not going to say there's any way, right way or wrong way to do this, but you know, draw whatever lines you want. Send a private message when you feel like it's getting to the point where it's free advice uh, and and brain picking. I mean, totally up to you how you guys want to handle that. But um, and everybody's got their own style. But the fact is, yeah, you could watch a hangout because, like, for me, I get some great material. This is a great opportunity to reach an audience I couldn't have reached. So the mm -hmm. fact that I can do this is awesome, right? And so the same would go for really anybody who's you know who accepts the you know request to be a guest on a hangout on air. Now this is all stuff you could have paid for, or just like Laura said, you could have you know somehow tried to finagle this into a conversation or whatever. You're getting a lot of this information for nothing, and I'm not saying I would charge you for it, but but like today for example, I um, there was a hangout shared. There's a hangout run by three extremely, really, really, really smart dudes, um, and uh, it was it was about brand voice. It was about authenticity. It was like totally amazing, 
And somebody actually made the comment, like, seriously, these guys could get paid thousands of dollars to right. like, tell us this one-on-one. -on -one. And they just sat down and talked about it for 45 minutes. And we can sit and listen to it and go back and rewind and listen to it again and just totally amplify our knowledge. How cool is that? Now, they get, I, again, there's a benefit to them for doing this, but, like, we, I think we really, we're, we're the real winners here. I had a fantastic example of that. I, I um, was on the Indie Office Hours show, and we were talking about metadata and how that can be used for your book, you know, to make it easy for search and all that stuff. And we had um, Angela Bull from um, IBPA on, and then also David Amerlin came on because it had to do with his search and everything. But David Ann Amerlin, if anybody's not following, follow him, is one of the brightest, most open, kindest people out there. And he is paid thousands of dollars to travel all over the world to speak to groups. But he's willing to come on there and speak to a, a small audience just because he believes in what he's doing and he wants to be helpful. That's, that's amazing to me. And, you know, also it helps him shape his thoughts too mm -hmm. because the more, you know, David's actually, he's also a writer. So as a writer, so here's a huge takeaway for you here, guys. Um, you know, as a writer, having that collective and collaborative element, I mean, this is stuff that people are talking about. And in his world, you know, the writing he does, that helps him a ton. I mean, he's, you know, and he said this, it, it helps him a tremendous amount to know the language people are using, the, the, the framing and the context and the way that people are feeling about certain topics because that helps him write in a way that's really going to connect with them and, um, you know, because that's the kind of writing that he does. So, you know, for, for David, I mean, it's a fantastic opportunity if time permits to go and, and engage with a live audience and, uh, you know, share his thoughts and get other people's thoughts as well. He also does a great thing called a Sunday, was a Sunday read. Sunday um, read. So, oh, I love it. Pay attention mm -hmm. to those. Those are really heady, but they're really awesome. I mean, you learn a lot. It's a lot of fun. And, um, and the, again, the thing, we talked to him on, on our show, actually, about how he does it. Um, and it's fascinating. So, you know, all of this kind of comes together in a way that, um, I guess, you know, it, it'll, it'll help you as a writer, especially, you know, mm -hmm. just take advantage of this highly concentrated, you know, group of people that are, you know, just, I don't, I, I don't know, it's tough to explain, but. No, you're know. right, because it expands, ex expands, it makes you more open to knowledge that before was hard for us to get. I mean, you had to either read the book, read the magazine, or whatever, but this is a constant flow of information, and good information, for the most part, <laughs> but good information that you can actually, you know, get, I, I, I know I, I'm not the only person in the world that does this. When I read something, I'm not just reading it. It's all the ideas that come out of what I've read. And that's, that's a huge value. And I can't stress that enough. I know, I, like I said in the very beginning, um, I know people say they don't have time. But if you have to make time to learn. And you have to make time to make yourself better. And this is an excellent format to do that. It honestly is. Not kidding. I'm not selling anybody anything. It really is. Um, on that note, I'm going to go ahead, and it's about that time. Um, I want to thank you, first of all, Stefan, for joining us, because I, I really appreciate everything that you uh, do out in the Google Plus space, and you put some really wonderful stuff out there. If you're not following him, follow him. And um, I, I don't know if I've told you I have your books, because they're, they're that good. <laughs> and you. he... Yeah, if you have if you if you have a chance, look at his series and his books. Um, really drill down into what you need to know and explain much further than we did tonight. Tonight we just gave an overview. I mean, with a lot of good tips, but really, when the nuts and bolts of it, I would suggest his books um, overall over anything that I've read on Google Plus. The two people that I would go to myself for uh, Google Plus would be you and uh, Ronnie Benser for the Hangouts. So that that's a uh, that's my piece on that. Definitely, um, I, I would I would also add, you know, guys like uh, you know, Martin Shervington. Yes, um, yes, Martin's Mar awesome. You know, too. Phenomenal with with uh, especially the business side of things, but phenomenal with um, the great tutorials, especially like beginner styles. Not beginner like like elementary, but just beginner like you know, here's how to make the most out of this particular feature. And he does it way better than the Google Help. Um, you know, official ones. So, <laughs> yeah, nice little, uh, cool little Welsh accent too, which you gotta love. So, um, yeah, definitely check out Martin. That's very true. That's very and, uh, 
There, I mean, there's a host of other people that are that are just really. I have actually have on my about tab a circle, a link to a circle of people that I curated and I shared it. Um, See, are, there you go. That's all that about, would be the place to look. And mm -hmm. it's all about people who are involved in Google Plus. So, like, as as a business. So, um, yeah, you can go if you go into my about tab. Uh, it's one of the first couple links. It's like Google Plus Starter Circle. So you click on that. That'll take you over to a, a post I shared with like about 30 or so people in it. Um, and uh, you know, actually, I, I linked. I did that. You know, it's a little book trick here. So right. I did that because I linked to it in my book about managing circles. So I'm like, here you go, right. guys. Right. Get started with these two circles. And the other ones about uh, the other ones people with uh, that are very conversational on their profiles. You know, it's, a, it's also a place to go. If you're trying to figure out how to do your About page, um, Stefan's is gorgeous. Thank you. It's gorgeous. And I know that you update that quite a bit, too. I try. Go and make, yeah. I do so yeah. much on mobile that, like, half the time, it's like, oh, there's a great post about this. And, uh, you know, finding it when I'm on my phone is brutal. So I'm trying to get into a habit where I'll, I can just put a link to something that I – site frequently and you know just put it on my about tab and there's then in the comment I can say hey, listen uh, there's a post about something blah 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 uh, by so and so on my about tab I'm on mobile just go check it out that's you know. smart and well the the side benefit is is I'm also sending them to a you know a, a semi landing a very very soft version of a landing page but they get to know me a little bit better um, if they follow through with it but it's also just also for me like I go to my about tab because I know that there's articles on there that I need to reference for other things. So I'm going to steal works. that. I'm going to put my um, past episodes of the show. You know how I do, I do the blog post the next day with all the resources and the embed. I'm going to do that with all my past episodes. Put them on there. Cool. That's smart. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was good. Um, speaking of my website, if you would like to watch past episodes or uh, tomorrow, of course, I do the blog post. But any resources, anything that we've mentioned during the show, um, I go through the whole. Uh, video and I make sure that everything is there and available to you. So if you're watching this on the podcast, uh, you can also go to thewritingbiz.com and find that information. Um, the podcast is available right now on Stitcher and iTunes and I added a couple other directories and you can find those on my website. And next week is a conclusion of the social media series and it's kind of a social media mashup. Uh, my guest right now I have is uh, Jeff C. from Manly Pinterest Tips. And well, I started watching the first version of Manly Pinterest Tips when it was on. And that changed the dynamic of how I treated my Pinterest boards and really sent that learning up to a level. And, and Stefan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Awesome. Um, yeah, so he's going to be on and he has a, he's a wealth information. We're also going to discuss LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram and some of the smaller social media things. Just kind of giving an overview of everything and uh, get some ideas out there so you can think about them and think how you can apply the different platforms uh, to your business and what works for you. On that note, I am going to thank you again, Stefan. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who's commented. There's been some wonderful comments. And I hope to see everybody either watching or listening to the uh, Writing Biz next week. Thanks so much.